Hi, I'm Russ Mitchell, and welcome to 7 Minutes. Our guest today is the senior senator from the state of Ohio, Sherrod Brown. Senator Brown, good to good see you. Good to be with you in downtown Cleveland. Yes. Good to see you. Here at Barrister's Bar, Grill, and Deli. I want to thank Great. Nick and Mary for letting us in here before rush hour to do this Great. interview. Great local people. place. Brown's helmets up. That's Indian, right. I don't see the Indian stuff. But. <laughs> I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. One of your favorite haunts I know. How you been? Good. Good to see you. Thank you. You have been uh, kind of all over the place. Uh, you've seen you on talk shows, news shows. I saw you on Seth Meyers a few weeks ago. You've been in Iowa. So it was right after Ann Hathaway, and that was cool. Okay. Ann Hathaway is my wife's favorite actor. <laughs> so that worked out so, well for you. So, yeah. Iowa, New Hampshire, places that folks normally don't go this time of year uh, for vacation. Uh, so <laughs> is it all but dotted line official? Are you no, running for president? It absolutely isn't. Uh -huh. I, I never, as you know from knowing you for years, and anybody watching this that's known me, I didn't have a long-term aspiration to be president. And uh, come November, it just became increasingly apparent to me that Democrats nationally are talking to our progressive base as we should and I've been a strong progressive for my whole career but we've also got to talk to working class voters and that and, and, and we, we've got to do that more and it just so I'm we're doing this dignity of work tour in the early right. states and we'll make a decision in March. You guys, you, you, so March that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Now. Uh, is there any one thing that could sway your decision one way or um, the other? It's it's sort of so intensely personal because it, it, it it's as, as Connie as my wife says it it's a uh, earthquake to a family that everything changes yeah. for that you know however long you run 12 months then you then you lose the early states or 15 months or 18 months or the whole two years and and so we're um, we're processing all that um, talking to kids grandkids are too young yes, to really yes. know what this means um, but and, and just talking to people around the country. Well, but by my count, there are nine candidates already declared on the, on the Democratic side, including four. Maybe behind US. a week. Maybe behind close a week. Enough, well, well you know, hey, changes you, changes you know, by the hour. You, you blink and it changes, changes as often as Trump's mind changes about issues. <laughs> right? Well, I would I want to ask you about that. Okay, so the, right before you get the Trump, if you do run for president, you've got to get past this <laughs> this Democratic you know, these Democratic you know, folks who want to be president as well. Twelve debates already set up. The first one for June. When you look at the playing field right now, why do you think you are a better candidate to be president of the United States than the folks already in the race on the Democratic uh, I side? I think my experience would make me, and I, I, I hesitate to say this because I, somebody that says I should be uh, the leader of the free world is, um, there has to be some ego attached there. And um, I, many of my colleagues, almost all of them that have already announced have been thinking of doing this for months, years, some maybe kindergarten, I don't know, but there is, in, in I'm, I, I, I'm not, but I am interested now. So, um, I, so I think I, I think my experience and my, in some sense, early reluctance to have this as an ambition rather than just public service would make me better in this office. I also think um, because my whole career has been about the dignity of work, this dignity of work tour now is, is not we're doing now is not a slogan. It's who I am. It's what I've been. Um, it's about workers. It's about seeing through, the, seeing things through the eyes of workers, understanding right. that women and people of color have even more challenges in the workplace. I want to come back to that in a minute. Let me ask you about sure. some things in the news sure. right now. The Lordstown plan yeah. scheduled to close next month, I believe, March yeah. 11th. Uh, is that a done deal? Are you optimistic uh, anything can be done about Senator that? Senator Portman and I do not accept it as a done deal. We continue to tr talk to General Motors. We continue to work with, try to work with them for to get an electric vehicle in there. They, they, you, you may remember, I mean, General Motors has not handled this well, putting it mildly. The day they laid off 1,500 workers second shift in Lordstown, that day they announced expansion of an operation in Mexico. And, and we just continued to say to them, why can't you do this expansion? Um, and, you know, understanding it's a retooling. They're not going to build the crews anymore. It's not selling because of gas prices. But they can do, if they're going to build another another SUV, like expanding right. the, the output of the Blazer, why can't they do that? And, and, and they got, you know, they first of all, the, the taxpayers saved this company. This company rescued this company 10 years ago. Second, they've gotten huge tax breaks. In m many of those dollars they've spent abroad or they've spent to enrich the executives through stock buybacks. So you blame GM. I, 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 I don't, I, I mean, it's, it's a complicated thing, okay. but GM, I, I, I less about blame than challenging them to do something different. I've right? got about three minutes uh, left. Okay. I want to get as much Sorry. stuff in as I can. No, no problem at all. You've introduced legislation to give workers what you're calling a cost of living refund. 50 million Americans get between 3000 and $12,000. And yeah. Who's going to pay for that? Well, you pay for it by by canceling the Trump tax bill. The Trump tax bill, 71% of that Trump, Trump tax law 
71% uh, of the co tax cuts went to the richest 1%. You do the Patriot Corporation Act, rewarding American companies for production here. You do the, um, the corporate freeloader fee, those companies that pay so little in big, big companies where the executives make millions, they pay so little that their workers are eligible for food stamps and Medicaid and housing vouchers. Uh, and then you do this Working Families Tax Relief Act, which will put money in the pockets of people making 20, 30, 40, 50,000 a year. You've also pr proposed a, a buy into Medicare program when you're when you're 50 years old. Mm -hmm. Healthcare industry says that'll that'll destroy us in many ways. Not as much as is Medicare for all, but it will not be good for us. Republicans don't like it. Does that have a snowball's chance? Oh yeah, it absolutely anyone? does. It it I think it will pass the House this year. I think Senator it, McConnell will be the target of all kinds of grassroots push to think about the 53 and 58 and 61 year olds that lose their insurance and they would have a chance to buy into Medicare. We'll make it revenue neutral to buy into Medicare early. Um, it's it, we know how it works. Uh, insurance companies will deal with it. They're, my, my goal is not to represent them. My goal is to get people insured. Uh, and uh, this clearly will make a difference in a lot of lives. I, I found almost nobody except insurance companies and Republican politicians that are frankly enthralled to the insurance companies who oppose it. I mean, it's overwhelming support for early, voluntary, it's your choice, buy into Medicare. You said on Meet the Press a couple weeks ago, quote, we have a president who is a racist. Uh, today, on Friday, when we're taping this, the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, the editorial that largely is favorable to you, but says this about you. Labeling someone a racist is the ultimate name to call. It demeans the namer as well as the named and demeans actual race hatred. Any regrets about putting no, that out there no. like that? I don't know what's in the president's heart. I don't really care about that. I know what he's done. I know that he, he continued to say for years that the president of the United States was not born in this country. That was about race. I know what he said about Charlottesville and Nazis and anti-Semites and racists, that they're good people on both sides. I've seen what he's done on voter suppression. So his actions are racist, and I stand by calling him a racist. You're a big sports fan. I know that. Big Cleveland through and through. A big story this week in Cleveland, the signing of Kareem Hunt by the Cleveland yeah. Browns, a uh, guy who was cut by the Chiefs after an alleged assault at the Nine Hotel last year. Uh, passionate folks on both sides of this. Some people say it's a good move. Others saying, you know, it sends the wrong message. What do you think about the Browns signing a guy like Kareem Hunt? Uh, uh, I, I would not have signed him. I, um, but I also, in part, beg off because my interest is all about the Indians and its pitchers and catchers this week. So the Browns will just have to not get in the news every day. But I, I would not have signed him. As we look forward for the next uh, couple days until March, what's the conversation you're going to have with, with Connie, your, um, your wife, and Discussions with your about what this means to our families, um, what a campaign like this feels like and looks like. It's a, it's a full-time, seven-day-a-week commitment with my Senate job of, for, for two years if it's successful yeah. and less time if it's not. Uh, one uh, quick question. I, we've talked about this before, I believe. There are a lot of good people who want to run for office but don't want to do it because of the nastiness of it, uh, the, the grind of it. Why would anybody want well, to go through something like this? Um, uh, as you know, I've not had this long-time aspiration to be president. I really started thinking about it in November. A lot of it was I thought about it because of the direction of this country. And I think this president is unfit to be president of the United States. I think the direction he's taking us on climate change, on the name-calling, the divisions. I mean, he, he, he governs by division. We've never had a commander-in-chief that brags about shutting the government down. Um, so um, I, th I feel so strongly that if he's president for four more years, our country will be unrecognizable in so many ways. Well, we will see you soon, perhaps back here for the announcement? I will do it in Cleveland. All right. Jared Brown. Thanks. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks, Russ.